Hi, I'm Tommy, one of the personal audio buyers at Crutchfield, here with Jeff Miller, one of our writers, to talk about Sony's new flagship digital audio player, the DMP-Z1. Jeff and I had the pleasure of attending CanJam New York recently, and Jeff got to interview Tomoaki Sato, the head engineer for Sony's Walkman division. Jeff, tell us a little bit more about the interview. It was a real honor. Um, Tomo, as they call him, flew directly in from Tokyo, and the first thing he did was get off the plane and give us an interview, so that was really nice. Um, and then he handed us this player, which I've never seen anything like it. It's a high-resolution music player with a built-in DAC and headphone amp. And oh, by the way, it is completely battery-operated, so you can take it wherever you want and listen to music. Also, when it's over a wide range of topics, he also happens to head the Walkman division, so we went through a lot of the history of the Walkman and that sort of thing. So, you know, you had a chance to surprise him with the, uh, the old Crutchfield catalog, didn't you? Yeah, we took a, uh, brought out an old catalog from 1982, uh, handed it to him, and uh, he got to the pages where he found his old Walkman, and we all started sort of started sharing stories about Kind of going down memory lane. Yep, yep. It's been interesting seeing Sony's lineage with the Walkmans. I can remember, it seems like just yesterday, they launched the NWZ A17 in 2015 and then evolved into the NWA45, yep. certainly a little larger screen size, but still very portable. And then their new flagship model, the NWWM1Z. Yeah, when they first, so that was, that's their flagship Walkman product. Um, he doesn't actually consider this a Walkman. I don't want to touch it because it's been um, polished so many times by the video team. <laughs> I almost am afraid it. It looks really large. It's about five yeah. and a half pounds, but it's really cool to have a screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. built-in memory, mm -hmm. two micro SD cards, and then the ability to drive really quality headphones such as the MDR Z1Rs that we also have on display from Sony. Yep. But so it seems like the key reason for the build design is the battery power. Yeah, um, we have some um, headphone amps and DACs that are about this size, but they generally you have to plug them into your power protector or your or the AC outlet, which could be dirty power, right? And um, kind of junk in, junk out. Exactly. And this one you can um, kind of pick up and take with you from one room to the other, or whatever, more easily. But one big major part he showed us was that five cell battery supply that had different cells feeding the analog side, the digital side, and um, incredibly robust. Another thing I think we noticed was how the analog and digital was uh, sides were separated and you know completely kept apart by this milled aluminum H shape I think they call it is uh, where it, it kind of nestles each circuit board into the top and bottom of this really heavy duty aluminum piece and keeps them separate keeps the left and right channels separate everything's balanced throughout just an amazing attention to detail yeah Kemper cables all within and a polished glass top, well, polished aluminum and then a polished glass top. The touch screen is, it works very much like those Walkman high-res players. Um, you can scroll through your music files, mess with EQs and play with it. Um, but one of the first things he actually showed us was this huge volume dial. Um, it's gold-plated. It's um, a version of the Alps RK501 volume dial that's used in home audio, uh, but they personalized it so they had better grounding, and it just kind of underscores the level of care that they put into this thing. And other headphone make manufacturers, hardware manufacturers looking at it saying, oh, Sony really did something there. Um, he made the point that they've always wanted to just preserve that Sony sound, that wide, outside-the-head sound field, and then that specific spot-on imaging. He made the point, if you are listening to a concerto and you see, hear three violins playing, you should hear, be able to pick out where those violins are playing. And certainly with this combination, you can do that, but this will also drive, you know, any of those tough to drive headphones. Well, it was quite a treat to get to meet Tomo at Can Jam and really excited to see the future of what Sony has to offer. And if you have any questions, feel free to call, email, or chat with us.